Hey, what's good with y'all, man? It's your boy Tan Souls. Now today, I got a very special topic for y'all, and there's a lot you could take away from this video. So let's talk. When critically thinking about rappers who the mainstream considers fallen off, of course some did lose ambition and hunger once they got the money, or they just weren't able to match the level of music they put out on their come up, but truthfully guys, that is not the reality as much as you think. To be honest, when you think deeply about it, even though it doesn't seem like it, most rappers go even harder once they make it. They finally have an audience watching them. They up their level of production, the substance, the sound. But despite all that, so many artists just can't replicate the love they received when they were at their peak. And us as fans, when we see these artists lose their mainstream hype and quote unquote fall off, we're quick to just blame the music. And if it's not that, we'll probably blame the record label for shelving them or something. But what if I told you, it was not solely the artists making you miss the music. Rather than, it was the cultural landscape that was surrounding the music at that time. So in many cases, you missed the time period more than the actual rapper. Now if you're confused, let me elaborate. When you're looking at these artists that we would say fell off, we know our perception of them is deeply intertwined with our own life and experiences listening to them. And we also know that our mind glamorizes the past. But here is where you need to listen. Because so many people think every rapper that blows up is destined for stardom and has extreme talent. I'm here to tell you that is not the reality. Most rappers get their fame by capitalizing on a wave or a trend. That simple. Nowadays we see this more than ever because there's always new waves and trends with all these new beats and sounds evolving. Now you could create your own wave, but we know that is a lot more rare, especially in this generation. And when creating your own, that basically just means you're putting out music that will stand the test of time. You're not just putting out whatever sounds hot, you're putting out a sound that people are attracted to and stands you out from the rest. Artists like Future, Young Thug, Drake, as much as you might think these are default mainstream rappers, I mentioned these three specifically because they've been able to stay relevant and chart over the past 10 years. Regardless of whatever wave is popping, whatever sound is currently hot, it doesn't matter. And because this, you could argue that's the difference between a real artist and somebody who's just riding the trend to get hot. And it just so happens, majority of rappers who quote unquote fall off, they just caught a wave. And now people will always hold them to that high standard that they set for us when they first came out, unaware that that's the best it's gonna get. This is the case for so many rappers who people say they miss how they used to sound or what happened to their music. You gotta realize you wishing for their old sound back has a lot less to do with the artist and a lot more to do with that period of time. You want that artist to make you feel like you felt when you listened to it back then. But the reason that the artist fell off is because when a new wave takes over and the sound changes, they aren't going to be able to make the shift. By that I mean, they're not going to be able to stay relevant when the sound that they blew up for is no longer mainstream. That's why you have to have real authenticity and talent to really have long-term success. A lot of artists lack that, yet we still wonder why they fell off. Now you think I'm gonna say all this and not give specific examples? Come on, man. And not only am I gonna list the artists, but I'm gonna show you how the year these rappers fell off was also the year of a new way beginning, showing that these specific artists' music was truly a thing of the times. And that's not a bad thing, I just explained why not every artist is built for longevity. So I keep showing clips of them, let's start with Lil Skies amazing artists with a very short catalog. But damn, every single year we see we want 2018 Skies back or it's his fans saying, yo, he's gonna take back over. Listen, coming from somebody who was a little Skies fiend in 2018, I was just like, yo, he was simply a thing of the times. He got his mainstream success from being an offspring from the 2016 wave. If you don't get what I mean, 2016-17 is a perfect example of rap truly evolving and shifting and finding a new wave. We had EXO Tour Life, F Love, Taking a Walk, like these new artists who gave like a more melodic side to rap and less gangster and more heartbreak. This was the new wave to jump on. And that's what Skies did. And that's not his fault at all. It's called inspiration. But remember, there's other artists who come out the gate sounding like nobody. And that to me was already a red flag, like he's not gonna be around too long. And although building such a core fan base and collabing with such high caliber artists, he never really reached any higher levels after he peaked in his first year with mainstream success. He wouldn't be able to keep that hype for the exact reason I told y'all. Listen, he lost the spotlight the year the melodic wave shifted. That was 2019. Rap music has phases. It's constantly evolving into new sounds and subgenres, 
and there's always going to be a prominent one that's just running the game. The prominent one in 2019 that was taken over from the 2016 melodic era was the melodic street rap. Because we had Baby and Gunna in Atlanta going crazy. Plus, you just had Roddy Rich blowing up, Lil TJ blowing up, Polo G blowing up. You had Youngboy, who obviously was already creating a name for himself because he's been rapping since he was so young, but he had some amazing albums that year, which helped push that wave. You had Rallo and No Cap come out. You had Gotta and Keed. I mean, so many street melodic rappers came out in that year. It shifted the wave. Now, if you were established enough to transition fully into this new lane, like Lil Uzi, then you'll be fine, but Lil Skies, he didn't make the shift. His music was truly a thing of the time. And surprisingly, same with Fetty Wap. I know that is confusing because I was debating in my head if, you know, he kind of did start a wave in a way. I mean, Trap Queen was revolutionary, but it became clear quick that his run wasn't going to last long. He had multiple bangers in his early years, similar to Lil Skies. But you know how I said Lil Skies joined the 2016-17 wave a little late? That 2016-17 wave would be the downfall of Fetty Wap. While Chief Keef, Dirk, Young Doug, Future, they were able to make the transition, Fetty Wap wasn't. There are so many examples of this. Another person who didn't make the shift that specific year was Chance the Rapper. He was going crazy in 2014-15. 2016 came, it was a little too negative for his liking, he didn't appeal to the mainstream. These artists came out the gate and set such a high standard for themselves, their demise came as unimaginable to so many of us. And in our head, we identify him with that specific time period and exaggerate their true level of talent. It's not until the wave shifts and a new sound forms where we realize, damn, like, this artist was really just a thing of the times. But even then, some fans still deny it. They don't believe that some artists just come in and ride trends and then slowly fade. When you're imagining a majority of these artists who have fallen off, you have a false expectation because you're identifying them with the specific time era that they blossomed in. But if the same music was heard from an unbiased standpoint and without the cultural impact, you would see clearly that it's the time period you miss. And rather than the artist, it's how the artist's music used to make you feel. And that's why I put Trippy Red in the thumbnail. Because I'm not going to sit here and say he fell off because I know he's got a very big core fan base who will argue that. But one thing I can say is, since 2019 I've been hearing the same thing, we want old Trippy Red. And that statement alone proves my point because... He's literally dropped so much music that resembles his old sound. But for some reason, it just feels like something's missing. And what that is, is the cultural landscape, man. But nowadays, because there's so many rappers, a lot of rappers come and go. And people want to have all these conspiracies tied to their name. Like, oh, they want to take care of their family. Oh, they were still in the streets. This, that. When in a lot of cases, they just call a wave. But yeah, man. It's been a minute since I just talked about rap. I ain't want to get too deep on this one, yo. Don't worry. More deep videos coming ASAP. And Grounded is going to have his first video this week. I am very excited for that. Now, as for this video, I hope y'all really get what I'm saying. Instead of just arguing, no, nah, they make trash music now. Because maybe if it weren't for our bias, it was never even that good. Anything that gets blown up and played a lot in our heads becomes fire, and that's simple. And like I said in the beginning, our mind glamorizes the past. When we think about these old anthems, we already have a higher expectation on the artist now than we should. But of course, not every artist. But thank y'all for watching, man. It's been your boy, Ten Toes. Make sure y'all be smooth, cool, and most importantly, man, be patient. I'll catch y'all, man.